Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 64. If you want to download this workbook for chapter 7, click on the link directly below the video and you scroll all the way down to the Finance Excel class section and you can download this workbook. Hey, in this video here, actually the last video we talked about the dividend growth model for pricing or valuing a stock. And in this video we want to see how to chart because we have our model and we want to see what happens to the price as the constant growth rate increases. And then we'll do a second chart and see what happens when we change uh, the required, let's say just required, what happens when the re required return rate changes. So in essence, we're going to see how one of the inputs for our model changes and what that does to the stock price. All right, so first we have to build a little table. We have 0 to 19%. Uh, Remember, the growth rate for this model is assumed to be less than the required return. So we only go to 19. And we build our little model here. It's always going to be, hey, the dividend at time 1, and I'm going to lock that with the uh, F4 key, divided by, open parentheses, R, R, assumed R, 20%, and I'm going to hit the F4 key minus our growth rate. All right, and that'll be a relative cell reference. So as we copy down, that'll be the input that changes. Control Enter, <coughs> and then double click and send it down. Sorry about that. All right. So what's happening here, you can clearly see as the growth rate um, increases, uh, the price increases. Now let's go ahead and plot this. I'm going to click right here and use control asterisk. That just highlights the whole current table, asterisk on the number pad. Then I'm going to go to insert. And we have a uh, number, number, so two numbers. So I'm going to do a scatter chart. And I'm going to select this one right here. And just as we predicted, we could see the um, pattern is price goes up. And as it gets closer, as we get closer and closer to the uh, the growth rate gets closer to the required return, uh, it skyrockets in price. Now let's uh, make this a little bit better. I'm going to click here and delete key to get rid of that. I want to actually make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to point to the edge when I see that diagonal black cursor. I'm going to hold shift and drag in. Whoops. Scroll over here. And now I want to do three things to this chart. I want to click on the title, and I actually want these words to appear in the title. So I'm going to click up in the for click on the label, click in the formula bar, type equals, and then click on the cell you want. Now with this edge uh, selected, I'm going to go up here and change the font to 12. All right now I want to label here and here, so I'm going to go up to the context sensitive chart tools layout. I'm going to go to axis titles horizontal, I'm going to say uh, below. And this is going to be our same trick. We're going to highlight that, click up here, equals, and click on that cell right there. Enter. Now you can see that's uh, showing up there. Axis titles, vertical, I'm going to say this one. Click in formula bar, equals, and stock price. So we can uh, see, and then you could print this out or do whatever you want. But there it is. We can clearly our label, our chart labels are properly uh, labeled. You know, actually, we could click here, Control One, to open up the format axis. I'm going to go to Number, and I'm going to say zero decimal places. I can maybe even scroll this down here. So that looks a little bit better there. Now, that's how the price changes as the constant growth rate changes. Let's go and see what happens to R. We'll do the same thing here. Equals, we'll do our model. Dividend at time 1 and F4 to lock it, divided by open parentheses. Oh, this is going to be the relative cell reference. That's the rate minus our G. And there I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it, close parentheses, control enter. Double click and send it down. I'm going to highlight the whole table, control asterisk. I'm going to go up to insert, scatter. I'm going to select this one, point to the edge, click and drag. 
click there and delete, click there, and we'll do our same thing, equals that, enter. Change the font, I'm going to change it to 10. All right, I need to add some uh, labels here. Layout, axis, I'll do the horizontal, equal, uh, click up in the formula bar, equal, required return, axis, oh, uh, vertical, we'll do this one. I'm going to say click there equals current stock price. Maybe I can point to the edge and make it a little bit taller. Click on there, control one, number zero. I'm going to hit tab to move to the next one. Notice the uh, axis already is um, changed, but watch this. Now I'm going to click down here. And now I can change the number for that, too. I maybe should have done that on the other one, too. I should have had zero there. Tab. Now we can see that that is uh, working. I'm going to click Close. I'm going to click here and then change it to uh, 8. OK, so we see the idea that, uh... oh, here's another thing. We don't remember uh, we had to start our required return above the G, so we're never going to get anything below 5 here in this one. So we can change this axis. I'm going to Control-1, and I'm going to go to the minimum fixed. I'm going to say uh, how about um, 0.05. I'm going to hit Tab and see what that does. That works just fine. Close. All right, so it starts at 5, goes over there. So as we, this is the required return, right? And just like we saw in earlier chapters, as you increase the discount rate, the amount of interest that you take out when you discount future cash flows is greater, so the current price is smaller. So as this increases, the required return, stock price reduces. And that makes perfect sense, right? This is the discounting rate. So as the discounting rate increases, the price decreases. Oh, we saw this relationship uh, most prominently in the bond chapter. But it's true for any discounting. As the discount rate goes up, the price or the value or the current value goes down. All right, uh, next video, we'll look at some uh, Still using the dividend growth model, uh, looking at some more complicated examples. All right, see you next video.